I am here with Ryan Leone, who's been one of my more interesting and divisive, uh, yes, here <laughs> on YouTube. But so I met him through Seth Ferranti, who knew him from. Were you in federal prison together, or you just knew each other through the grapevine? No, yeah, we we met each other through the writing world. Right afterwards, and but you know, um, in this world of talking about and supposedly being criminals and gangsters, you know, the first thing is to check somebody's resume in a handsome, uh, intelligent suburbanite such as yourself, who has these hardcore tales of street daring do, it's always like, is this guy for real? Well, Ryan Leone is definitely for real. Um, he served, what did he get, 60 months for heroin trafficking. Yeah, um, five years for conspiracy to distribute, um, and then I did about another year on violation. Then I caught another pimping and pandering state case. So if you don't think there's white pimps, there are. Though that was <laughs> that was all there's trumped a, up charges. It was a misunderstanding. Misunderstanding, but so allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> well, no, it wasn't an alleged misunderstanding. Well, no, yes. It was. <laughs> so so, um, but go check out the interviews I did with Ryan about a year ago. Got a lot of views. Super duper interesting. And we're here with a update on your activities um, because life doesn't stop when the camera stops on our profit show. People keep living even after they tell their stories and you got a lot of exciting stuff going on and I don't want to throw around the phrase Johnny Depp but I'm doing some stuff with Johnny. Yeah, I'm doing some stuff with Johnny Depp. We became friends. I actually met Johnny the last time we did an interview, yes. that that day, he brought somebody over to my house to get interviewed, and then that person was like, "Oh, I'm gonna take you to meet Johnny Depp." So I'm thinking, whatever, and and then they left the house, and they're sending us pictures of him and Johnny Depp, and you guys have become good friends. Well, yeah, and, yeah, we've become good friends, man. Johnny's a good guy, and yeah, we have, we have, we have some projects have we're a doing together. Project in the camper, top secret hush hush, but that's for real. Yeah, and and he was he. He guest starred on a comedy album that I did. Um, oh yeah, you got a product out. With but Johnny Depp made him a product. Well, yeah, he, I did a. Talk that for for so, yourself. Well, let me let me backtrack of what's happened to me since last time we spoke. Since you know, the I, Al yeah, since the since the Al Profit experience. Um, so I mean, you know, back when we did that, I mean, I already had the book out. I'd already sold. I don't know, one hundred and forty thousand copies, but it was over. A long period of time, five years or so. It came out in 2014, so I think we met in 19, right? We met in 19, and I'd just gotten out of prison. I paroled from state prison for the pimping case. That was March of 2019, and I got out, and thankfully my parents helped me get into an, to a place. You know, we got a guest house here in L.A., um, my fiancé, my two-year-old son, and, and myself, and I started working bullshit jobs. You know? Telemarketing. Telemarketing, um, trying to sell roofs on you commission. You said you couldn't take it anymore. I couldn't take it. And I came on your show, and quite honestly, I, since then, I, I haven't worked a day of so-called conventional work. Because we talked about, you said, like, some people come and they say, Hey, Al, tell me how you make money on YouTube. And I tell everybody the formula, which is really, if you're an interesting person with stories, the formula is just work. And I tell you some different technical things and tips and tricks, but it's really about, are you interesting and do you do the work? You did the work and tell people what it. Yeah, so so I started my own channel. Uh, it's just my name, Ryan Leone, and I started telling stories about my life episodically. I mean, I think from an outside perspective, people find my life interesting. Um, you know, the, the prison, the heroin addiction for 20 years, etc., and, and then the writing stuff on top of it. And, and don't just gloss over the writing. I mean, you were and are like a hotshot writer in the L.A. literary scene, and you've optioned multiple screenplays, and you, yeah. know, you have free your friends with actors and celebrities, who, and et cetera. Yeah, so, so my writing career, um, yeah, I mean, you know, there's a difference between... That's the, that's the L.A. riots. The ghetto birds. That's the ghetto birds and the, for the riots. Um, you know, there's a difference between monetary success and having success as a writer and I think by the time we had met I like you said I mean some big names were behind me and everything I had already optioned my first book Wasting Talent to be a film called Love in Vain um, and I had a documentary that was in production before it's, it's now in post production it's it's going to come out um, this August I worked on it with Jim Oles who is the screenwriter for Fight Club um, you know Nick Stahl's narrating it um, 
and the villain from Sin City, Yellow Bastard from Sin City. So I had these, I had irons in the fire. But when I got on YouTube, you know, I I learned a lot from doing time. Um, I guess from playing poker, you know, learning how to stack your chips. And I I, I did some GoFundMe stuff. Um, I started selling signed books. Uh, made some blotter art that I was that I was selling. Oh, there was a Brian has done some really. So when you're known for your criminal stuff or being a drug user, the products that people might want to see from you could be very corny, right? But Ryan has done a great job of taking things from this kind of um, edgy underworld we kind of are from and doing cool, interesting things. So you had an uh, artist and who did it for you? My best friend Jeff DeRose did it, but I also had Ken Kesey's son, yes. Zane Kesey. Ken Kesey of, uh, you know, go watch my documentary, Has of Dreams, if you don't know who Ken Kesey is. Part he also wrote um, One, Flew, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, Oscar-winning film with Jack Nicholson. And Ken Kesey's son did a piece of artwork, which was then chopped up into faux acid bladder paper that you sold. So that was really, really creative and it takes something underground and edgy and makes it into a product that wasn't corny at all. Yeah. So that was dope. Yeah, and we made we made limited edition ones. I sold 800, we were selling them for 40 a piece. I just did another 100 on a different image. We sold them for 60 a piece. And the following started growing exponentially. I'm up to about 12,000 followers, but it's it's not like, you know, it's not like your channel. You have hundreds of thousands of followers. A lot of them are very ephemerally connected you have like like these are like this is a core following and then what i did past that is i got on patreon which is extended exclusive um you know um content i'm making like six grand a month off that and then with the youtube altogether i'm making six figures now so it went from literally welfare i mean we were shopping at food banks before i went on your show no i mean you i mean not to be whatever but like you know you hit like Hey, can I get forty bucks? Yes, because you need it. I, <laughs> I no, I mean, I'm just, no, 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 no. I remember you asking me. So, and I watched him do it through hard work. So, and then there's another guy I'm going to be interviewing again soon. JC from Wrong to Strong. Cavario was manning the camera right now. Me and him went down to Phoenix and saw Cavar, uh, a JC who reached out to me after my Cato story. And JC is another guy who said, "Hey, how do you make money on YouTube?" And I told him. And he was another guy with a lot of interesting stories, and he's built his channel up, and he's had a lot of positive things come through. So I know for all of us, and I include me, felons, it's hard to go hand in a job application. But, you know, thanks to technology, if you really are as interesting as you claim you are, and you really are a trapper like you say you are, there's money to be made on the Internet. <laughs> if you're part, of the, tra- if you're part of the trap so squad. So is Cavario, <laughs> and so am I, and so is J.C. Um, yeah, and you know, so it went from like, you know, literally like I, we got my, my documentary back in production. I sold the screenplay, uh, came out with a comedy record with Johnny Depp, Nick Stahl, Freeway Ricky Ross, Boston George, Dirt Nasty. Um, now if Universal Music Group put that out, that would have cost them a pretty penny, but all these people just did this. And the love, as they say, on the cuff, on the arm, on the cuff, man. Because because they because they like you and they're your friend. Yeah. And Tell them they line up again. Um, Johnny Depp, Nick Stahl, Freeway Ricky Ross, Boston George, and Dirt Nasty, and Tommy Chong. Of ABM course. always be monetized. And, and Tommy is Chong is that still for sale? Yeah, it is. It is. What's the call? Where can they get it? Drug stories for truckers. Um, I released a bootleg. I sold over a thousand copies. What's that mean? A bootleg? I just Physical? I just. No, I just sold a file, like a raw MP3 file for ten bucks. I sold a thousand of them. Um, you know, it cost me two hundred dollars. That's forty dollars. Yeah, yeah, I got you. PayPal. <laughs> Ooh. Um, and so I did that album. I sold a couple screenplays. I just signed a three book contract with um, the hip hop artist Mickey Avalon. I'm going to be writing his memoir trilogy. I ju- I'm coming out with my second book, Anti Heroes, next week. I co-wrote it with New York Times bestselling writer Tony O'Neill. And then um, I'm going out to Europe to stay with Johnny Depp for an extended period of time to work on some projects we, we got going on. And then I have my documentary coming out this August. I fired the director. I'm directing it myself. I wrote it with Jim Oles, who is the screenwriter from Fight Club. Then we got the film version of my book coming out. 
while all this was happening, one of my best friends died of an overdose. Um, his name was Paul Harper. Well, that's what I want to tell yeah. us about your Narcan program. Yeah, so I was getting into that. Um, you know, one thing for me is I think one of the fundamental ways that I stay clean is through altruism, you know, doing nice things for other people or, or helping mankind as a whole. Well, the word altruism means doing something selflessly, but really when we help Selfless. others... We're helping. We're helping ourselves. our. We're helping ourselves. It keeps us sober. You know, keep, meaning. keeps me off heroin. Gives my life purpose. So, in the middle of all this, in the eye of all of it, where I went from struggling to making six figures, and I can say I'm financially independent now. My parents don't give me a dollar. They don't pay my cell phone bill. My I pay every single thing myself. In fact, now I'm helping my parents financially. Like you know, I'm 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 helping them out when I can, and that feels really good. Um, especially you know, three prison terms behind me, but. One of my best friends died. I got the phone call. It, it, it was the worst thing that ever happened. You know, I'd gladly go back to prison for 15 years right You've now. You've lost a lot of friends, girlfriends. I mean, I th there's been a lot of deaths to overdoses, but this one in particular, um, he was a brother to me. I'm an only child. That was a brother to me. It was like getting hit by a train. And so I started, you know, Narcan is an opioid antagonist that helps you come out of an overdose. When you overdose on an opiate or opioid, an opiate's heroin or morphine, opioids are synthetic like Oxycontin, you know, um, uh, Norco, Percocet, those are opioids. Opiate or opioid overdose gives you about a 30 minute respiratory arrest window. He was found by his widow about eight minutes too late. If she had had Narcan, it's a nasal spray that you put in somebody's nose, it, it can save them. It brings them right out of the overdose. So they're expensive. Certain states give you subsidies so you can get this thing, you know, this stuff for free. In states where there's where it's not subsidized by the government, seventy five dollars a unit. So I got, you know, some of is my California. California gives free, give no, how free dark. How does a person get those? At methadone clinics, needle exchanges. Now they're giving them to people when they parole from how, prison. How, how many would like? How many do they give you? They give you a box that has two doses. It's a nasal spray. So if you find someone overdose, you spray it in their nose. My boy just paroled from state prison yesterday, a couple days ago, and he said that. Now they're giving you a box of Narcan when you parole, and they're also prescribing you Suboxone, which I think is an incredibly. Well, so they're 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 assuming you have to ask for. It. No, they just give it to you. Like so, hey. they're assuming most of the people coming out of prison have an opiate problem. Yeah, or at least they're going to be go be around, be around people opiates. that have opiate oh, wow. problems, right? Which is true. So so I, I registered with the Secretary of State, got my tax exempt status, five hundred one c three. I started something called the Paul Narcan Project. I'm doing raffles, fundraisers, I got philanthropists sponsoring it. My vision is to get it in every McDonald's, every corporate setting, motel, everywhere, like a fire extinguisher. Because it's a very, more people died last year from accidental opioid, accidental opioid overdoses than, than, than gun deaths last year. And that's, that's astronomical. That's yeah, that's yeah it's astronomical and it's new. So it's definitely something where we can have a tangible, we can affect real change, real tangible change by providing the substance for free. In tribute for Paul, um, I, it's on the website, paulnarcanproject.com. Um, check it out. We, you know, I'm raising money and I'm also giving away free Narcan. There, there, there's the um, a prevalence of overdose deaths amongst the middle-aged white population in the United States has caused something kind of unprecedented in demography. Um, the the march of human history in, in modern times is the life expectancy getting longer. Well, in the last few years, the life expectancy for middle-aged white people in the United States who are the wealthiest, most powerful group on planet Earth declined for the first time since we've been keeping track. And uh, that was attributable to overdose and uh, suicide. So something bigger is going on. There's change is going to come, and it's brewing. And as we know, what went on after George Floyd, um, you know, certain groups of people are not. There's a lot of groups of people that got a lot of problems, and that's not to compare any of them. But the world is really messy and conflicted, and there's a lot of pain and sadness in it. And uh, I think it's great that you uh, you were introduced to people on my channel telling the tales of getting high and getting caught. And now you're telling us about getting sober and being successful. And, so, and saving lives. Yeah.
you know, arguably, I mean, I have to set a good example for my son, and I can't have that life of debauchery be be meaningless. You know, it, there has to be a purpose, and I think that's going to be underscored in my documentary. Um, you know, it's all about getting better, but then when you get better, not forgetting where you came from. And staying better. You know, and staying better and, and not forgetting where you came from and, and imparting Because it's so painful sometimes to think about the past that you want to block it out of your head. And sometimes helping others that were in a condition that you were can bring back your own painful memory. So a lot of people do when they get better, it's like, oh, I don't want to deal with any of that. But you're still in the trenches dealing with those issues, trying to help others to come up um, from behind you. Right? Yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you know. So where can we uh, check you out and uh, on YouTube and all that stuff? You, I support YouTube you? is Ryan Leone, R-Y-A-N. And if you thought the stories he told on my channel were good, he's got stories for days, and they're all true. Ryan Leone, R-Y-A-N-L-E-O-N-E. That's my YouTube. My social media is Ryan Leone 85 Check out RyanLeone.net. My book its name is Wasting Talent. It's available at every bookstore, including Amazon. And the Paul Narcan Project is paulnarcanproject.com. Nar Narcan is spelled N-A-R-C-A-N. So P-A-U-L-N-A-R-C-A-N-P-R-O-J-E-T. And I'll have a link below on what? They can give money? You can give money. You can do good. And that just buys a Narcan. There's no... No, no, no. No, the Narcan's free. You can go on there and you okay, can sign up for it and we'll give you free Oh, Narcan. that's not to get money. That's no. to get some free Narcan. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So you can all, donate there too. So all you people nodding out while you're watching this, all <laughs> jokes aside, you might need some Narcan. Yep. All right. Thanks, Ryan. Hey, thank you, Al. Kavari on the camera. Pleasure.